Spoilers ahead. Watch out, and take care. In the near future, war rages across the Republic of Gilead, previously the United States of America, and pollution has rendered 99% of the female population sterile. The country, ruled by a totalitarian patriarchal theocracy, is structured in such a way that it exclusively favors the upper class. Members of the lower classes are separated from their families, and forced to labor in horrible conditions. There is little or no justice, and the residents of the country are denied their fundamental right to freedom. The movie begins with Kate, her husband Luke, and their daughter Jill attempting to cross into Canada from the Republic of Gilead, in order to escape the country's troubles, and provide a better life for their daughter. Unfortunately, as the border police quickly find out, the family of three is unable to reach their promised land. Kate is captured after a horrific encounter with border patrol officials, that kills Luke, and Jill is nowhere to be found. After being detained, Kate is sent to a detention center, where she and other criminally convicted women are tested. When the results are in, Kate and a few other are among those who receive favorable findings, they are promptly separated from the others and transferred to a different place. Aunt Lydia, the woman in charge of the Red Center, a training academy for handmaids, greets them and informs them that they will all become handmaids. She tells that they were chosen primarily because they are among the Republic of Gilead's 1% of fertile females, allegedly, pollution led a big part of the country's women to become sterile, leaving these fortunate few alone. Following Aunt Lydia's introductory address, the girls are bused to the Red Center. Kate meets Moira on the bus, and the two become friends. The following day, Aunt Lydia advises the fertile women on their responsibilities as handmaids. They are to serve as concubines to the country's wealthy but childless families, with the primary goal of bearing offspring for them. Their duty is viewed as an act of service to God and to their country, and their training includes a lot of scripted group chanting, and ceremonial violence to chastise the girls. Kate is taken into the commander's residence, called Fred, as his newest handmaid. Serena Joy, the commander's wife welcomes her into the house, but it's clear she's annoyed by her presence. Serena immediately establishes ground rules for Kate to follow. She asks Kate whether she wants to have a baby, and she responds yes, because that is her responsibility as a childbearing concubine. Serena agrees and informs Kate that they may start working together. Kate gets indoctrinated into the handmaid cult, and becomes an official handmaid, walking the streets in red robes. She returns to Fred's house after the indoctrination ceremony, where Serena escorts her to her room, and gives her further instructions. Kate is subsequently given the new name Alfred, which signifies she is the property of Fred. That night, she has a dream about her daughter Jill. The next day, Serena and Kate have a short rite with the commander. He and Serena take turns reciting an Old Testament verse, and then they pray for the blessing of having a child through Kate. Serena attends Kate and the commander's first ceremony at night. When Kate wakes up the next day, the kitchen crew tells her how she should spend her day. She is to wait for Offglen, another handmaid. The two are going to the grocery store together to acquire groceries for their different homes. Later, on their walk out of the store, they have a light talk about the country's ongoing Mayday war against a rebel movement. On their journey back, they come upon a pregnant handmaid, who everyone praises for doing God's will. Kate's behavior gradually reveals that she is dissatisfied with the direction her life has taken. Kate is ready to steal a pair of scissors, most likely to perform the unimaginable, but she is caught by Nick, the commander's chauffeur, who has been flirting with her for a long time. He doesn't report her, instead, the two kiss passionately, and he informs her that the commander requires her in his office by 10 p.m. At daybreak, she asks Offglen what happened to the last Offred, as there have been two other handmaidens who have served the commander before her. Offglen maintains that she knows nothing about it. Meanwhile, the commander inquires about their most recent handmaiden, to which Serena says that she is better than the prior ones. Nick accompanies Kate to the commander's office that night, and she covers herself with her veil. The commander however locks his door and orders her to remove it, because this is not an official visit. He then reveals that he wants to get to know her better as a person, because he believes that if he does, she will feel more at ease, and become a better handmaid. They play Scrabble, as instructed by the captain. After she wins the game, he hands her some strawberries as a prize, claiming that he knew she'd win, because she was a librarian. He then informs her that he will be gone for a week to the capital. Serena invites Kate over the next day, to help her with her gardening. She starts a conversation with Kate, and informs her that the main reason she gets handmaids is because she wants a baby who will make her life complete. She also informs that she is aware that Kate has a daughter. When Kate asks her if she knows what happened to Jill after she was imprisoned, she responds that she has no idea, and will try to find out. Kate is still not pregnant after three months in the commander's house. This worries the family, 
So Nick drives her to the hospital for some testing. Her doctor says she's well, however, he knows the commander and assumes he's the one who's infertile, because he's tried to have a kid twice before. When she inquires whether they also test men for sterility, the doctor responds that they do not, and she will be held responsible if it does not work out. Surprisingly, he offers to assist her by impregnating her. The doctor claims that no one will notice that it is not the commander's child, and that he has assisted many other ladies in this manner. She respectfully declines, but he persists, threatening her with dire consequences if she does not become pregnant. When he makes more advances, she threatens to scream for help, and he ultimately lets her go. Back to the commander's residence, Kate has one month to become pregnant. The commander and Kate play a game of cards, and she wins yet again. When she asks for her prize, the commander hands her a pile of magazines that were intended to be burned, since they contained unlawful material. She requests that the commander do her a favor and provide her hand lotion, because she has dry skin. He initially agrees, but after a while, he reconsiders and mentions that his wife might smell it on her, and become enraged. When she swears she's not even close enough to Serena, he offers to provide her, on the condition that she not use it during their ceremony evenings. During the next ceremony, the commander gets carried away, and is ready to touch Kate sensually, however, Serena stops him instantly, believing that he is more drawn to Kate than she is to him. Later that night, Kate confronts the commander, telling him not to touch her like that again, because Serena will be furious and transfer her to the colonies, where the standard of living is awful. She then takes advantage of the situation to ask what happened to the last offer. He explains that she was unable to conceive, so she did the unimaginable. Kate is taken aback by this and hastily exits the office. Meanwhile, Serena is growing frustrated as she waits for Kate to conceive. She summons Kate one day to discuss the problem. She claims she hasn't discovered anything about her daughter, and Kate wonders if she has noticed any pregnancy symptoms, to which she replies no. As they continue talking, she warns Kate that time is running out. She admits that her husband may be infertile, and proposes that Kate sleep with another man in order to conceive. She dismisses Kate's warning that she would be killed for doing so, adding that women do it all the time. When Kate asks who she has in mind for the job, Serena says Nick is a wonderful fit, because he is loyal to them. Kate eventually agrees to the plan, and the two vow to keep it a secret. Kate and Nick get intimate that night, and their affair begins. Serena tells Kate the next day that Jill is alive, she clearly knew all along and was keeping the information from Kate. She then presents Kate with a snapshot of her daughter, which makes her cry. When she inquires about Jill's whereabouts, Serena simply assures her that she is in good hands, and is well cared for. Kate inquires about seeing her, but Serena informs her that it is impossible because Jill would not recognize her as her birth mother. Kate rushes to Nick's room that night to confide in him. She informs him that she must see her daughter. He realizes her wish cannot be achieved, so he chooses to console her instead. After a few days, the handmaids all gather to witness the extraordinary event of their fellow handmaid Walter giving birth. Serena watches the occurrence, and gets even more impatient, urging Kate that she should get pregnant soon. Meanwhile, Offglen tells Kate to study the commander, and learn whatever she can about him, saying that this will be beneficial. Kate and the commander will meet again at his office. She notes that he is a mystery to her, and that she would like to learn more about him. They make small talk, and she takes advantage of the opportunity to observe the commander in his thought process. Some time later, all of the women gather to hear the verdict of a handmaid found guilty of seduction and fornication with a medical staff member. According to the handmaid's teaching, events like this are always the fault of the lady, and her punishment is death. As the other handmaids tug at the robe that kills the handmaid in the public square, everyone cheers. Following that, another man is brought in and convicted of assaulting a pregnant woman. The handmaids in the center are enraged, and eventually beat him to death. Kate and Offglen, on the other hand, appear to be the only sane women present. Offglen admits being a member of the resistance. She informs Kate that the man was not guilty, but rather one of their best men. Glenn asks Kate what the commander wants from her, because he wants to see her privately. Offglen explains that the commander is the security chief, making him a prime target for the opposition. Almost immediately, a vehicle explodes behind the women, and a group of armed men fires randomly. The men are made a resistance personnel, so they spare all the handmaidens in the area. Offglen informs Kate that the resistance may require her to assassinate the commander, as he has been their biggest impediment to establishing a democratic state. Kate is at first doubtful of the proposal, but when she realizes that it is her only chance to meet her daughter, she accepts. When she goes to the commander's office, he surprises her by telling her he's taking her out, giving her a fancy black dress to wear. She had to lie down on the floor during checkpoints, 
since the commander says wives aren't allowed where they're going. When they get to their location, they discover that it is an illegal nightclub. The commander introduces her as Mary Lou to everyone. They both dance drink and sleep together, and leave. When they get home, Kate walks into Nick's room, and informs him that she is pregnant, and will not give up their child to the commander and his wife, who she despises. She then informs Nick that she wishes to flee, and invites him to join her. When she returns to her room to relax, she discovers a note from Offglen, with the words 10 p.m. tomorrow, and a knife beside it. The next day, she rushes to tell Offglen that she found the note, but when the girl turns around, Kate sees that Offglen she knew has changed. When she wonders where the previous Offglen is, the stranger claims to be Offglen. Meanwhile, when Serena discovers that Kate has been sleeping with her husband outside of the ceremonies, she confronts her and taunts her, before storming away. Kate's plan is to kill the commander by 10 p.m. that night. He's going to shoot at her when she walks into his office, but when he sees that it's Kate, he lowers his guard. She seizes the opportunity to murder him right away. Nick and other police officers arrive at the residence, and arrest Kate, however, the arrest is a hoax, because the police officers are actually undercover Mayday Resistance members, who assist Kate in escaping. Nick and Kate say their final goodbyes, as Nick must return to join the Mayday Resistance. He assures Kate that he will continue to send her messages, and that she should flee and care for their child until he returns. Kate hides quietly in the mountains, reflecting on her first daughter Jill, anticipating the arrival of Nick's kid. The End Thank you for watching. Subscribe if you'd like to see more videos like this. Turn on the notifications, and leave a like to help the channel out.